Hey, hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria Peacock. I'm a home baker in the state of Michigan. So make sure to like and subscribe. I share all things content as far as decorating tips, recipes, all the things. So I'm here for you guys to answer your questions. I'm super excited today. We're going to be just talking about a few things that you guys have been asking me. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much. I started this channel about 12 or 13 days ago. You guys have been so supportive. It has been the coolest thing. And I'm so stoked to just share with you guys some information because you've been asking a ton of questions. So let's jump right into it. One of the questions that I got recently was how do you get your home bakery business kind of out there, so to speak? So the biggest piece of advice when you are starting with your home bakery that I can offer you based on what I've experienced is community group. I live in a college town in Michigan and we have multiple community groups, right? We have uh, groups where basically are for my city and people talk about all types of things. They talk about traffic incidents, news related things, school related things, people post business stuff in there. And so that is the first place that I would recommend starting. If you do not have a business Facebook page, you need to start one of those before you do anything else. I know for some people, social media can be scary, but there are tons of tutorials out there of how to start a Facebook business page. It's actually a little bit simpler than you think. And with tools like Canva, even the free version, you can make a really nice professional looking logo, or um, there's all types of places you can go like Etsy or Fiverr where you can hire someone to create you a logo as well. So that's the first thing that I would recommend doing is starting a Facebook page, um, requesting it on your personal profile to be in those community groups, and then just sharing some content. Hey, I'm in this area, here are the things that I'm offering, and then so on and so forth, and just be consistent. Don't expect that you're gonna post once or twice in one of your local community groups and you're gonna have the orders flowing in. Consistency is super, super key. So my community group, for example, only allows like small business selling posts on Mondays. So typically on Mondays, I will go in there and I will create a post, whether it's about an upcoming cookie class that I have, a recent order that I did that I just want to share. Hey, I'm in the area. Um, if you've, you know, if you're new to the group or if you're looking for a baker to uh, kind of that you can go to for your events, here I am. So that's the first thing I would recommend. The second thing may be really obvious, but a lot of people don't start there is your friends and family, right? So my friends and family are great. I have tons of people at church that share my posts. Super appreciative of that. So I would just reach out to your friends and family and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Would you mind just sharing my, you know, post on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is that you're using? I would definitely recommend Facebook for more of like a order placing situation. Um, I obviously have YouTube. I do have an Instagram account. I do have a TikTok account, but those accounts I'm typically just sharing like videos on. Um, I always have my customers reaching out to me on Facebook Messenger or they are emailing me. So that's kind of just a little tidbit about where I'd start about how to, how to get your bakery out there and what you're doing. I would also recommend establishing at least somewhat of a menu of four or five things that you're gonna start offering. Maybe it's just one thing. Maybe you're just gonna do sugar cookies. Maybe you're just gonna do cake pops. Maybe you're just gonna do cupcakes. That's perfectly okay. You don't have to be somebody that has all the things, right? So you determine what works for you. Establish somewhat of a menu so that way your customers know what to expect and then just start posting and being consistent about it. Facebook um, Business Meta Suite is really great for scheduling posts. So sometimes, especially if I know I'm gonna be really busy with orders, I will go into my business suite and I will make posts for the next seven or eight days. I'll schedule them all out. I use ChatGPT to help me write content and script for my posts. Not that I don't have the ability to, it's just so much faster. If I can uh, type into ChatGPT, here's the post I need, create it, and it does an amazing job. So those are things that I would highly recommend doing. The next question that I have been getting is what I use to package and seal all of my baked goods. So this right here is one of my best friends. This is a heat sealer. Essentially what you do, these by the way, are like, I don't know, anywhere between 20 and 30 bucks on Amazon. I think this is like a 12 inch maybe uh it might be an eight inch i don't really remember 100 percent. but essentially you just plug it in um you set it to the setting that you want i typically always have mine set between five and seven just depending on how long i'm using it for and then use cellophane uh treat bags of all different sizes these are obviously really small this is just what i had on hand to show you um so this is typically what i package my cookies in specifically 
uh, my state mandates that when I am selling like cookies as a whole um, or individual uh, treats that they have to be individually wrapped. So cookies specifically have to be individually wrapped, individually labeled, things like cakes, cupcakes, um, even cake pops, I can package like in a box and then put the proper labeling instructions. That's one of the other things that I mentioned in one of my other shorts is learning about what your cottage foods, food laws are. So typically every single state is a little bit different. There are some states that do actually mandate like what you can and cannot sell. Just making sure that we're keeping food safe for clients. There's all types of things. And like I said, typically every single state is different. So if you're curious about what your cottage, cottage food laws are, you can literally just Google Michigan cottage food laws, Ohio cottage food laws, whatever state that you're in. And it will typically take you to your state's like michigan.org, your state's website, and it will give you everything that you need to do, how you need to package your stuff, if you have an income limit, if there's things that you can and cannot bake. Um, like also in the state of Michigan, I am not allowed to ship uh, baked goods to another state. There is a way kind of like around it, so to speak. Um, but I wouldn't personally want to deal with packaging cookies and mailing them shipping to someone anyways. I just think it's too much hassle and there's already enough for me to do <laughs> where I'm located. Then one other thing I got to mention, I forgot to mention is as far as like boxes for cookies, boxes for cakes, things like that. I personally just go to my local Hobby Lobby and buy an individual box or boxes for that specific order that I've need. With the research that I have done, even buying boxes in bulk on Amazon, is they're really actually quite expensive, and then you have to store them. So my local Hobby Lobby, for example, and I think all Hobby Lobbies are like this, their baking section is always 50% off. So even if a box is 2 or $3, you're going to pay half of that, first of all. And then second of all, you should be um, incorporating your packaging costs into what you're charging your client in the first place. Um, and so the only containers that I typically store or have on hand all the time are larger boxes for cookie orders because typically when people order cookies from me, I require at least a minimum dozen, but most of the time people are ordering more than that. So after my cookies are individually wrapped, I do put them in a box, obviously, because then it's easier for the client to pick up and take home. And then I keep on hand larger uh, cupcake containers because I cannot get those at my local Hobby Lobby. My local Hobby Lobby and even my Walmart only sell like 12 section cupcake things at a time. Typically, once again, when I get cupcake orders, like I got multiple orders this summer for graduation parties, which was super cool. People were ordering like three or four dozen cupcake uh, sets. And so it was much easier for me to have a giant cupcake container that fit 24 cupcakes rather than giving them five or six, 12, you know, individually section cupcake containers. Hopefully that makes sense. So whether you have like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby or a Joan Fabrics um, near you, um, I would recommend just going in there and seeing what they have. For some people, it does work better if you get really busy and you just need to have boxes on hand all the time. The other thing is, especially with cakes, um, because I personally offer a wide variety of things. Sometimes I get cake orders and sometimes I don't. So I don't want to store a bunch of boxes of boxes <laughs> um, just to, you know, have a box in case somebody orders that size. So does that make sense? So typically I will just go to my local craft store and get a box for the size that I need when I have an order. That may change in the future if things get too busy for me, but I do find that it is very cost effective and it saves me storage space because even though I am so grateful to have the kitchen that I have, the house that my husband and I were in previously, the kitchen was incredibly small. I literally had like four cabinets. So grateful for the kitchen that I have, but it's full. So I don't have a lot of space for it. I do have space out in my garage that's in an, an enclosed container where I keep a lot of my um, cookie cutters and those big cupcake containers and all the things. So those were kind of the bulk questions that I am getting right now. I want to know what other questions you guys have, whether you're interested in starting your own home bakery or you're interested about recipes or more cookies. I've been posting a lot of cookie decorating content. You guys have been having some awesome feedback and some awesome questions on that. So I would love to create more content for you guys. I just want to make sure that it's valuable for you and that, um, it's also interesting to watch. So let me know what you guys think. Also, I would love it if you would tell me in the comments if you prefer shorts uh, videos or if you prefer kind of longer form content. I don't think that any of my videos would be like crazy long. I would assume if I had to guess this video is going to be under 10 minutes after I edit it. 
Um, but I know with YouTube, it is hard because it's only 60 seconds and there's only so much that you can say in a shorts video. So anyways, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts down in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions at all. And I'm super excited to be here. Thank you guys again so much for all the support. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great blessed day. Bye.